Hi everyone, my name is Mark, and today we're going to take a look at another horrible case with you. On May 24, 2019, Jennifer Dulos, a doting mother, was never seen again by her five kids and family. This shocking event threw the police into a deep investigation which uncovered an even more shocking truth. Jennifer Dulos's disappearance had been caused by someone who had at a time been the center of her world. Jennifer Dulos was born on September 27, 1968, in New York City to Hillard Farber, a banker, and Gloria Sortenberg, a philanthropist. Jennifer had just one sibling, her sister, Melissa Irene Farber. She studied at Brown University. She graduated in 1990. She got a master's degree in writing from New York University Tisch School of Arts. Jennifer's uncle, Arthur Ortenberg, and his wife founded a fashion company, Liz Clairbone Inc. In 2004, Jennifer Dulos got married to her heartthrob, Fotis Dulos. They had five children together, two sets of twins and a girl. They named them all after Greek saints, Theodore Dulos, Constantine Dulos, Petros Dulos, Christian Dulos, and Cleopatra Noel Dulos. Jennifer and her husband, Fotis Dulos were united for 13 years until their marriage hit the rock in 2017. Jennifer had grown scared of the man she was once in love with. This brings the question, who was Fotis Dulos and what had changed about him? Fotis Dulos was born on August 6, 1967, in Turkey. He grew up in Athens, Greece. Fotis moved to the United States of America in 1986. He studied at Brown University and graduated in 1989. A few years later, Fotis bagged a master's degree in finance at Columbia Business School. Fotis met his first wife, Hilary Vanessa Aldama, at Brown University. They had attended the same school. He married her in Athens in 2000. After their marriage crashed in 2004, Fotis moved to Connecticut. Dulos had married Jennifer in September 2004, a month after his divorce. He had been seeing Jennifer while he was still married to Vanessa Aldama. After their marriage, they moved to Farmington. Their union produced five children Jennifer Dulos adored with her life. That was what made the police suspicious when she disappeared. Jennifer would never intentionally abandon her children. Before her disappearance, Jennifer had filed for a divorce and was fighting for the sole custody of her kids. Her marriage to Fotis had gone so sour she had become terrified for her and her children's lives. The Dulos marriage hit rock bottom in 2017. Jennifer Dulos first hinted about her troubles in her marriage in a blog post on March 12, 2012. She shared how she wished she was a much stronger person and confrontations did not scare and appalled her. In 2017, Jennifer Dulos filed for a divorce on the account that Fotis Dulos was increasingly living an independent life and cheating on her with his colleague, Michelle Traconis, a native of Venezuela. Jennifer Dulos filed for emergency custody of her five kids in 2017. Although the court denied her request, it granted her and Fotis Dulos shared custody. Jennifer Dulos was scared for her life, but most importantly, for the safety of her children. She claimed that her husband, Fotis Dulos, exhibited irrational, unsafe, bullying, threatening, and controlling behavior. She shared one of the unfortunate experiences she had suffered in Fotis's hands. On June 3, 2017, he had found out that she had planned activities for their children on a Saturday morning. It had not sat well with Fotis, so he lost control. According to Jennifer, he had become enraged and agitated. She was terrified and tried to get away from him by rushing upstairs. But Fotis followed all the way up, and even after she locked the door and bolted it so that she was trapped inside, he kept verbally attacking her and physically intimidated her. Jennifer Dulos knew she was not safe with her husband. She had invited trouble when she filed for a divorce. In an interview, she confessed that she was terrified of Fotis. She had admitted that her desire for a divorce had infuriated him, and he was going to retaliate by harming her in some way. Jennifer Dulos claimed that, in May 2017, when she filed for a divorce, Fotis had threatened to kidnap and harm their kids if she refused to agree with his terms in the divorce settlement. 
He had even bought a gun that year. In 2018, Jennifer re-requested the emergency sole custody of her kids. During the hearing process, the court discovered that Fotis had broken several court orders. Jennifer was given full physical custody of her children, while both parents shared legal custody of the kids. Fotis was granted supervised visits and monitored phone calls. Jennifer and the kids moved to her rented house in New Canaan, 70 miles away from Fotis Dulos. Fotis Dolos had been genuinely hurt by Jennifer's accusation. In an email he sent to Jennifer in 2017, he expressed his concern for his children's well-being. He confessed that their children needed both parents, not just one of them. He had pleaded with Jennifer to reconsider their marriage for the sake of their children. He even stated that they could work as partners and learn to tolerate each other. However, while denying the accusation levied against him by Jennifer, Fotis claimed that Jennifer was the one turning their kids against him. He alleged that the mother of his children called him a psychopath and told the children he did not care about them. He also claimed that Jennifer had bragged about dragging the divorce over a space of two years so that she could have the mafia break his legs with a baseball bat. Fotis Dulos also denied ever threatening to kidnap his kids. He admitted to buying a gun, but he had only gotten it for home protection. Fotis Dolos's arguments could have been considered or even believed if the next event did not happen. Jennifer Dulos was last seen on May 24, 2019, at around 8.05 a.m. That day, she had dropped her children off at New Canaan County School and returned home shortly after. The police were alerted of her disappearance by some of her concerned friends. Jennifer had had two appointments with her doctor scheduled for 11 a.m. and 1 p.m. in New York City. Jennifer never missed her doctor's appointment, so her friends became worried that she had not shown up. Jennifer Dalos's friends were not the only one who noticed something unusual about Jennifer's disappearance. Her live-in nanny, Lauren Almedia, had been worried when she arrived at Jennifer's new Canaan apartment by 11.30 a.m. and met her Range Rover in the garage. She recalled that Jennifer had planned to take the car to her doctor's appointment instead of her Chevrolet Suburban which was missing in the garage. Lauren Almedia did not inform the police of Jennifer's disappearance until 7 p.m. By that time it was glaring that there was something fishy about Jennifer's absence, as she never arrived home that late or left home on her own without informing anybody. After the disturbing reports, the police began their investigations. Some detectives searched Jennifer's new Canaan house. However, they would break the hearts of everyone who cared about Jennifer Dulos. On the floor of the garage, blood splatters were found. And also, blood traces were found on one of the walls in the garage and the door. Blood traces were found on the exterior of the Range Rover as well. Inside the house, blood splatters were only found in the kitchen. And it was not Jennifer's blood alone. It was a mixture of hers and her husband, Fotis Dulos's blood. This made people wonder how Fotis Dulos had murdered his wife. Further investigations by the police showed that Fotis Dulos had been at Jennifer Dulos's apartment on the day she went missing. According to the police, Fotis had gone to Jennifer's home with a bike as the tracks around the house were too small to belong to a car. However, Fotis lay in wait for his wife until she returned from dropping her kids off at school. He then shot her in cold blood, cleaned up the scene, and got rid of the evidence. At about 10.25 a.m., Jennifer's neighbor's CCTV captured the Chevrolet Suburban, leaving her home. The police believed that Fotis Dulos had been the one driving the car. The police alleged that he had hidden Jennifer Dulos's body and other items reasonable to the cleaning of the murder scene in the car. After hiding Jennifer's body, Fotis Dulos had abandoned the car three miles away from New Canaan. The police were confident that Fotis was a cold-blooded murderer because of his suspicious actions later that day. At around 7.30 p.m., Fotis Dulos and his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, were caught on tape-dumping garbage in trash bins. This could have seemed pretty normal except they had used 30 thrash bins in different spots in Alford Avenue, Hartford, when the police searched the bins, they discovered different incriminating items. 
In the garbage bags, the police found different cleaning items, some pieces of blood-stained clothes, and used hand gloves. A test was run on the items and the results confirmed the police's fear. The blood matched Jennifer Dulos, while Fotis's DNA was found inside one of the gloves found and on one of the thrash bins. Fotis Dulos murdering his wife in cold blood did not cause as much shock as his girlfriend, Troconis, being an accomplice in the crime. Michelle Troconis, a native of Venezuela, was many things. Troconis was a mother, a horse rider, and a former ESPN reporter in South America. But what no one would ever expect her to be was a cold-blooded criminal. Michelle Troconis started seeing Fotis Dulos whilst he was still married to Jennifer Dulos. Her affair with Fotos contributed to the breakdown of his marriage. After Jennifer went missing, the police brought Traconis in for questioning. When asked where she was on one day Jennifer disappeared, she claimed that she had had lunch with Fotis Dulos that afternoon, and also claimed that she and Dulos had gone to one of his properties to clean it up in preparation for a meeting with a client. The police believed that they had been cleaning up Jennifer Dulos's body. The police investigation led them to more videotapes showing Michelle Troconis in a more compromising situation. These tapes led them to find out exactly how Fotis Dulos had committed such a horrific act. Fotis Dulos had carefully planned out his moves, and the police believed he had not done so alone. On May 24, 2019, Fotis drove a Tacoma truck owned by his employee without his permission to New Canaan, Connecticut. In a video captured by a school bus at 7.05 a.m., the Tacoma truck was speeding on the highway towards Waveney Park in New Canaan, the place where Jennifer's Chevrolet Suburban will later be found. The police confirmed that a bicycle tire had been found in the boot of the truck. This affirmed the police's speculation that Fotis Dulos had cycled the three miles from Waveney Park to Jennifer's apartment in New Canaan. The police believed that Fotis had arrived there earlier before Jennifer. He had attacked in the garage just as she got back. Afterward, he had cleaned up the evidence, bundled Jennifer up in her Chevrolet Suburban, and driven straight to Waveney Park, where he transferred her body into the Tacoma truck. As meticulously as Fotis tried to cover up his tracks, he had left two huge pieces of evidence of his presence in the new Canaan house. He had left a sample of his DNA on the doorknob and a mixture of his and Jennifer's blood on the faucet in the kitchen. The police alleged that Fotis had spent hours cleaning the house, hence the neighbor's surveillance footage that showed Jennifer's Chevrolet Suburban leaving the house around past 11. The police were even more certain that Fotis Dulos was a cold-blooded murderer when he made another shocking move five days after his wife's disappearance. Fotis Dulos took the Tacoma truck out again without permission. This time, his destination showed that Fotos was as guilty as they come. He had driven the truck straight to a local car wash and detail shop. In the surveillance video of the truck, a black SUV was driving right behind him. The driver of the SUV was none other than Michelle Troconis. In the video, Fotis is seen dropping the car off at the car wash. Afterward, he had hopped in beside Troconis in her SUV. The police were convinced that the couple's mission was to rid the car of every bit of evidence. However, they were not so fortunate in their quest. Samples of Jennifer's DNA were found on the passenger seat of the car. As expected, with all the daunting evidence gathered against Fotis Dulos, he became the major suspect in Jennifer Dulos's disappearance. On June 7, 2020, Fotis Dulos was arrested and charged with capital murder, murder, and kidnapping. Fotis Dulos had not been arrested for the murder and kidnapping of Jennifer Dulos until June 2020. You might expect that Fotis should have been arrested earlier, he sure was, but he had not been charged with murder. On June 1, 2019, Fotis Dulos and Michelle Troconis were arrested at a hotel in Avon, Connecticut. They were charged with hindering persecution and tampering with evidence. At the time of their arrest, the police did not have enough evidence against the couple. They both pleaded not guilty to the charges. Fotis Dulos has hired Norm Pattis as his attorney. 
Pattis strongly believed that Jennifer Dulos was dead. Fotis and Traconis were released. But in September 2019, they were arrested against for tampering with evidence and hindering justice. However, in October 2019, Fotis appeared in court. He requested a dismissal of the charges against him. The judge mentioned that he would look into the case and review arguments from the persecution and defense. During this period, Jennifer and Fotis Dulos were living with their maternal grandmother. The kids at that time were aged between 8 to 13. Their grandmother was granted temporary custody of the children by the court. Fotis Dulos's Waterloo came in 2020. In January, he was arrested and charged with the capital murder of his ex-wife, while his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, was arrested for conspiring to murder. Following the arrests, Michelle Traconis became estranged from Fotis. In an interview, she admitted that she had made a huge mistake by trusting Fotis. Prior to their arrest in 2020, Traconis had allegedly moved out of the Fotis Farmington $5 million home with her daughter. Fotis Dulos's former lawyer and friend, Kent Douglas Mawinney, was also arrested and charged with conspiracy to murder. Mawinney was taken in at gunpoint. The police believed that he had helped Fotis and Traconis create an alibi on the morning of Jennifer's disappearance. Also, during that period, Douglas Mawinney had been accused of spousal rape by his wife. Mawinney became separated from his wife. And things got worse after he was arrested in connection to Jennifer Dulos's murder. His wife felt her life was in danger. His wife told the South Windsor Police Department that her husband was planning to kill her with the help of his friend, Fotis Dulos. During their investigations, the police discovered that Douglas Mawini was a member of a East Granby gun club. A group of local hunters informed the police that they had seen a human grave on a property associated with the club. The police went ahead to search the property in question and indeed found something very suspicious. A shallow grave was found on the secluded property. In the grave, the police found two bags of lime and a blue tarp. There was no body found in the grave, but the police believed that it could have been removed. The grave had been discovered with the help of a canine in August 2019. It was unfortunate that despite the arrests, Jennifer's body was not found. Her family was devastated despite the fact that their daughter was about to get justice. In an interview, the family's spokesman confessed that the arrest of the suspects did not give them any sense of closure. He admitted that the incarceration of Jennifer's murderer could never bring her back, so the ache in their hearts could never go away. Fotis Dulos's bond was set at $6 million on January 8, 2020. He was released the next day on bail, but he had to return to court on February 8, 2020. Michelle Traconis was released on bail as well, while Douglas Mawinney's bond was set at $2 million. However, it was reduced to over $200,000. He was released on bail on October 19, 2020. Fotis Dulos's fear after his cruel actions caught up with him led to an unfortunate event. On January 28, 2020, Fotis failed to appear in court for an emergency hearing. The judge gave an order for him to be brought to court. On getting to his Farmington home, the police found Fotis in his car unconscious. Fotis, apparently, could not face the consequences of his actions, so he tried to take his own life. Fotis had poisoned himself with carbon monoxide. He had connected a vacuum cleaner to the exhaust pipe of his SUV and passed it back into the interior of his car. The police had performed CPR on him and restored a faint pulse. He was transported to Yukon Medical Center by ambulance. The center transferred him to Jacoby Medical Center in the Bronx to undergo hyperbaric oxygen therapy. While at the hospital, Fotis's children, who were still living with their grandmother, visited their father. It was the first time they saw their father after he was accused of murdering Jennifer. A suicide note was found by the police in Fotis's car. He had written that he was not ready to spend an hour in jail over something he knew nothing about. On January 30th, 2020, Fotis was confirmed dead by the Jacoby Medical Center. After Fotis's death, the police report released showed that Fotis's last girlfriend, 
Anna Curry, claimed that she had been with him on the day of his emergency hearing. She told the police that she and Fotis had planned to drive to the court together. However, Fotis told her he would prefer that they go separately. Curry admitted that she had been terrified when Fotis's attorney had called her to ask why Fotis was not in court. She had been driving at the time and she had told him that Fotis should have been in court, to which the attorney replied that Fotis's GPS tracker showed that he was still in his Farmington home. Curry immediately knew that Fotis had done something to harm herself, and she asked the attorney to call 911. After Fotis Dulosa's demise, the murder charges against him were dropped. On March 3, 2020, a judge passed a Noel Prosequi request to the prosecutors. Fotis Dulos was not acquitted of the charges against him, but the case could not continue as he was dead. Noel Prosequi is an acknowledgement of that fact. However, it provides the prosecutor with a year to refile the case, or it is permanently dismissed. During the hearing, Fotis Dulos's attorney expressed his interest in clearing his client's name. Norm Pattis believed that Folis had been framed. He argued that whoever framed Folis had dumped the bloodied clothes and other incriminating items the police found in front of Folis's front porch. Folis, in turn, had innocently set out to dispose of them. Hence, the surveillance footage the police had found. Pattis requested to substitute Fotis Dulos's estate as the defendant. However, Pattis's request has not been considered since. Michelle Troconis had been put on house arrest after she had been accused of conspiring to murder Jennifer Dulos. However, there had not been any significant progress on her case as the COVID pandemic had put the case on hold. Traconis's lawyer, John Sheonhon, in an interview, had confessed that there had not been even the slowest progress on Michelle Traconis's case. However, she was scheduled to appear in court on August 6, 2020, while Douglas Mawinney was to appear on June 2, 2020. Both parties still pleaded not guilty to the charges. In an interview, Michelle Traconis addressed all the people who had made up their minds to judge her without even knowing her personally. She admitted that it was possible to misjudge people. However, she could not be the judge as to whether Fotis Dulos was capable of murdering his wife, but she was capable of judging the fact it had been a waste of time trusting Fotis, and rightly so. Four years after Jennifer Dulos's disappearance, she still had not been found. Over the years, the police have scourged several places for her body. In 2019, the police had begun their search in Waveney Park, three miles away from New Canaan. They had made use of canines and helicopters to carefully search the area. However, when there was no positive result, the search was extended to New York City. The Dulos family owned a property there. The police had searched the property carefully before turning their attention to central Connecticut. The police did not relent in their efforts to find Jennifer as they went ahead to search Hartford CT. Their search had led to the surveillance tapes showing Fotis Dulos disposing of garbage bags in different trash cans all over the city. This led the police to the garbage processing plant of the city. The search took weeks, but it was worth it, as the police found a lot of useful evidence. The search continued to a special fishing pond in Avon that the Dulos family usually visited. The police proceeded to central Connecticut. They searched houses that belonged to the missing's husband's company, 4 Inc. The area covered is estimated to be about 3,000 acres. However, Jennifer Dulos was not found. In August 2021, the search led them to a Farmington house on Mountain Spring Road, which was connected to Jennifer Dulos's husband. The police had chosen to search the house to follow old leads. A renowned expert in finding out unmarked graveyards, Bob Perry was invited by the police. Also, the police brought a septic rank and an excavator to get the best results. Up to this moment, the police have not given any information about finding Jennifer Dulos's body. Despite how horrifying Jennifer Dulos's story was, something good came out of it. In May 2021, the Connecticut State Senate passed a domestic violence bill. The bill was named after Jennifer Dulos and another woman who was a victim of domestic violence, Jennifer Magnano. 
The bill got almost undisputed support from every member of the Senate. On June 28, 2021, the bill was passed into law by Governor Ned Lamont. The other Jennifer the law was named after, Jennifer Magnano, was also a victim of a very toxic marriage. In 2007, she was murdered in cold blood by her husband, Scott Magnano, in Terryville, Connecticut. Immediately after the gruesome act, Scott Magnamo committed suicide in front of their three children. Jennifer Dulos's family sadly has not been able to move past their daughter's death. In an interview, the family spokesman expressed how much the family missed Jennifer. He shared that Jennifer's wonderful personality and bright demeanor made even people who never knew personally hurt by her disappearance. 